Welcome to the Greater Canal Valley Foundation's 14th Annual Report to the Community. I am Melvin Jones. I'm the Chairman of the Board of Trustees. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. We are pleased to see so many of the Foundation's donors, grant recipients, committee members, members of our local governing bodies, and the community leaders. We have invited you here today so that we may report to you on the activities and programs of your community foundation. The foundation is fortunate to have an exemplary board of trustees. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the members of the board of trustees of the Greater Canal Valley Foundation. I ask that they stand and be recognized as they call, as I call their name. And let's hold our applause until the end. Charlie Lowe, Vice Chairman. Todd Mount, Secretary and Finance Committee Chairman. Dayton Carpenter, Scholarship Committee Chairman. Michelle Easton, Monica Jansen, Distribution Committee Chairman. Jamal Khan, Bob Orders. Sean Mayberry, Susan Shoemate, Troy Stollett, Investment Committee Chairman, Deborah Sullivan, and Philip Tissue. These are the members of the Board of Trustees of the Greater Canal Valley Foundation. We're also very proud to have the board and staff members of our Boone County affiliate joining us this afternoon. Please stand so you can be recognized. There they are. We also have members of the African American Philanthropy in Action Giving Circle here this afternoon. We, would you plan, please stand and be recognized? There we go. This is the first African-American giving circle in the state. And in less than two years, they've been able to accumulate enough capital to give away $5,000 in two separate grants earlier this year. <laughs> At last year's annual meeting, we shared our thoughts and the work to date on our strategic plan. At its June meeting, the Board of Trustees adopted a new strategic path forward. The board and staff of the foundation, along with 300 other community lead leaders, engaged in a planning process to develop a strategy that would enable the foundation to invest in the community in a meaningful and impactful way. As a result of this process, the Greater Canal Valley Foundation has a bold vision for the region that it serves. We seek to be a forward-thinking and closely connected community that fearlessly works together to promote prosperity for all. In order to make this vision a reality, the foundation is working towards carrying out its new mission. And that mission is to make thoughtful and proactive investments that grow the multiple forms of work, wealth necessary for a community to thrive. The seven forms of community wealth include individual capital, intellectual capital, social capital, natural capital, built capital, political capital, and financial capital. By working to grow multiple forms of community wealth, we believe the foundation, along with our grantee partners can have a sustained and lasting impact on the issues that continually undermine better outcomes in our education and health system. While fostering leadership and civic engagement throughout the community. Our new strategic direction focuses on cultivating community wealth that will achieve the following long-term goals. Number one, our community is a place where students from early childhood to post-secondary build skills, knowledge, and credentials necessary to become 
productive, and successful. Number two, our community supports the healthy choice. And number three, our community is full of strong, innovative, and effective leaders who work to create a shared vision, work to build across cultural relationships, and to build capacity for fostering positive change. Two years ago at this meeting, we announced the creation of the health value chain in partnership with Charleston Area Medical Center. I'm pleased, I'm pleased to announce that this year, we have locally grown food now being purchased and used in the medical center complex. In fact, addition, additions to the use of locally grown produce, this value ch chain has spun off several new businesses and family opportunities. We now have a wheat grower in the state, have a, have a wheat processor in the state, and a bakery that produces West Virginia bread that is being purchased by CAMC. The vending machines at the hospital complex now include locally grown fruit, fruit. And in order to accommodate the use of the fresh produce in the vending machines, they all had to be retooled. And a West Virginia business is doing the retooling. CAMC has also made CSAs available to their employees. A CSA or a community-sponsored agriculture that allows people to buy shares of a farm's harvest in advance and then receive a portion of the crop as they are harvested. This year, the foundation has undertaken an initiative on the west side of Charleston. In addition to our grant making that we described earlier, on the west side, we will strategically concentrate additional funds and other assets in and around Mary C. Snow Elementary School. The Pacific area, the Greater Canal Valley Foundation's concentration will be from Hunt Avenue to Grant Street to Third Avenue to Bream Street to Canal Boulevard. By allocating resources in a Pacific area within a community and deliberate and intense effort, the foundation believes a systematic change can be achieved at a deeper, more sustainable level. The foundation will be working in collaboration with other funders and community members to produce fundamental change in service systems and community problem solving to improve the overall quality of life for people who live, work, and play in that area. Our investments will be aimed at identifying and mobilizing local assets and building local capacity. Our areas of interest in this initiative include health, leadership, and civic engagement and housing. We have heard from and learned from the community leaders on the west side in regards to the history and culture of the neighborhood, as well as gain insight from the extensive data and planning that has been compiled and developed. In order to hear from a broader community, we have contracted with KISRA to engage local nonprofits that serve the West Side and engage residents in the West Side in a neighborhood needs assessment. In the meantime, we have supported two ongoing projects on the West Side. They are the project West Invest and the rehabilitation of the Paul Lawrence Dunbar Community Center on 2nd Avenue. We partnered with the Charleston Police Department, the City of Charleston, and the Charleston Urban Renewal Authority in support of Project West. As most of you have heard, the goal of Project West is to create a positive paradigm shift for home ownership, neighborhood revitalization, and crime reduction in challenging neighborhoods. To promote Charleston police officers living in Charleston West Side and to create a catalyst for positive change. Two police officers have already purchased homes in the area and are in the process of renovating these, these homes for occupancy by the officers and their families. The historic Paul Lawrence Dunbar Communication, Community Center is in need of renovation. 
We partner with the Charleston Urban Renewal Authority to promote necessary funding for a new roof, to evaluate the electrical system, and to place the center on the National Register. The Greater Knob Valley Foundation is able to participate in our community in meaningful ways because of our donors, our professional advisors, our grantee partners, civic leaders, and community members. We thank you for caring and concern and your involvement in the Greater Canal Valley Foundation. Now it's my pleasure to bring Becky Saberler, Saberly to uh, the podium to do the operational report. And I'm going to take a point of personal privilege here. Becky, <laughs> please come up. Those of you who may not know, Becky has elected to retire to another job. <laughs> uh, she believes so much in our uh, credo about civic engagement, she decided to become a council person at the city of Charleston. Uh, she moved us eons from where we were and has left us in a great place. Uh, we owe her so much. Um, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Greater Canal Valley Foundation, I want to publicly take this opportunity to thank Becky so much for what she does and what we are going to continue to ask her to do. Thank you very much, Melvin, and, and I need to thank you and thank all of you. Uh, and I'll take a little personal privilege at the end of the meeting to do that. But um, it's, uh, it's a one, been a wonderful opportunity for me, and I wish that I were the only one that did it all, but it is not true at all. Uh, everybody in this room has contributed to the Community Foundation and made it the leader, which I'm going to talk about now in the nation, actually, in many ways. Um, I am Becky Separately still, and uh, I am the president and CEO of the Greater Canal Valley Foundation. And I get the opportunity to introduce the staff of the foundation. And again, I will uh, ask them to stand to be recognized, and uh, please hold your applause till the end. Patty Magic is our chief financial officer and our technology officer. I think they're all in the back of the room. So, <laughs> Sherry Ryder, our senior program officer. Sarah Farrell, our administrative assistant. Stephanie Heyer, program officer. Susan Hoover, our scholarship program officer. Faye Johnson, our financial assistant. Jane Powell, our marketing director, and is the person who is responsible and has the direct responsibility for this particular program. So, and this particular event, Jane's over here. Um, we owe her a debt of gratitude for making all of this look so good and making us look so good today. Megan Simpson, program officer. Christine Spaulding, our senior accountant. Thank you. I also want to recognize and thank John Augie of Augie and Gray. Um, for all of his production work and everything else he does for us at the foundation, and particularly for this annual meeting, John, you can stand up. In case nobody knows who John is, this is John Augie. And I also want to thank Scott Finn and all the folks at West Virginia Public Broadcasting, and they're everywhere around us here, for live streaming our event today. On your chairs, you will find a fact sheet that outlines briefly the financial picture of the foundation for the fiscal year 2014. These numbers are unaudited, so they could change a little. But in 2014, the foundation received a little over $12.5 million in contributions and distributed over $7 million in grants and scholarships. At the end of fiscal year 2014, the Greater Canal Valley Foundation had over $225 million in assets under management. Yay, absolutely. 
And I think we can safely say that this 